Hello. What I meant to say was, how's everybody doing tonight? No, I didn't mean to say that. I didn't mean to say that. Um, before I get started, is anyone interested in doing like a Q&A at the end of this, or you want me to just talk? Talk? Because we're very limited on time, and I could, I could talk a lot. So, um, <laughs> you guys want to hear some jokes? <laughs> uh, what I want to talk about tonight, um, and I'll start by saying that I find these kinds of things uh, when you're up on stage and there's a bunch of people listening, it's, it feels almost like kind of self-indulgent, and it always makes me feel kind of awkward standing up here and pointing to pictures of things that I've done. Um, so I don't really like to do that. It kind of makes it a little awkward for me, and it's kind of awkward for you guys, because if you paid for it, you could just go on my website and see the same thing in the leisure of your own home. Uh, so I want to talk about other stuff that's more important, uh, stuff that maybe uh, will help a little bit in some way, or you know, maybe you just won't like me and walk out. That's cool, too. Um, I'm going to talk about my personal experience getting to where I am here today, this very spot. Uh, the, there's a lot of um, people who email me and will come up to me and ask me, you know, like, how do you do this and how do you do this and blah, 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 blah. Everyone's kind of got their own way. So I think it's good if you kind of explain your story of how you got to where you were because sometimes people just, they, they don't want to share certain details of how they got to where they are and they don't want to share, you know, uh, what, what moved them to do certain things. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about that. And uh, the first thing we'll do is start with the early years. Um, I grew up in Long Island, if you can't tell. <laughs> and uh, I was the oldest of three brothers. Um, and my second brother was born with Down syndrome. And that whole experience was like a real kick in the ass, this is welcome to life kind of experience. Uh, there was a whole bunch of complications with his birth and heart surgeries and all these things. Um, you know, basically, you know, I was about two years old and I, I'm already like waiting to go to a funeral for my baby brother. So to start it off, I mean, that's kind of like what everything I do is based on. It's just that one moment in my life. And, you know, eventually things turned out okay, but working from from that angle, growing up from that angle, when you're dealing with something that's as kind of traumatizing as that, and then, you know, going to kindergarten, and like some kids are like, you know, don't want to eat their pudding or something because it's like weird looking. It's like, it really kind of puts things into perspective for you because it's just like, well, I, I've seen some, some pretty horrible things already, and I don't know what else is, is out there for me. So it's, it, it, it kind of put me in a weird position just right off the bat. Um, so I've always had that feeling that I had to, you know, make up for certain things and, and deal with problems that, that were out there and, and, and kind of do them my own way because it wasn't anything that I could really just turn to the next person and, and say, you know, uh, what do you do when this happens? Because it doesn't really happen all the time. And, and not that it doesn't happen. I mean, it certainly does, and it happens worse than what happened to me. But it was one of those things that I think, you know, kind of formed who I was uh, right, right from the start. So, kind of in, in that scenario, um, my mother, my grandmother, my father, I spent a lot of time with them because, uh, you know, when we weren't in the hospital doing whatever horrible things that were happening there, we would be home and uh, my parents, my, my grandparents, a lot of, there's a lot of artists in my family, so we kind of spent time being creative. So, that, that was kind of like a therapy thing for me. Um, so, that, that's always been my way of expressing things and, and getting things out there. And, uh, you know, it, it got tricky after a while because, especially when I was younger, uh, if you grow up with um, someone in your family who has some kind of disability, especially in the 80s before, like, PC stuff happens, I mean, you're basically, you're just waiting for people to stare and yell things and do, you know, horrible actions to, you know, to you or, or anyone else in your family. So it was kind of like the first thing I, I, I learned how to do, like, as, as I was developing, was to fight. Um, and it, 
certain things would happen, you know, like people would say certain things or whatever, and it's just, you just feel the instinct to fight back and defend someone who doesn't have that kind of defense that uh, we're all kind of, you know, accustomed to. So, <laughs> without getting too heavy, I mean, that was really, that's kind of like the basis of everything I've done. I've always, I've always said, you know, I'm going to take care of things. I'm going to do it by myself. I don't need anyone's help. And it kind of came from the place where even if I wanted help, I couldn't have gotten it. So it was just like, let's just, let's just make, make, make a path and we'll just follow it. You just do it whatever way works. Um, so that, that's kind of how it started. So moving into like older years of when I was, you know, in my early teens, um, I started getting into hardcore music and metal and, you know, that punk scene and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, it's, once you get in there, there's a bunch of older guys with tattoos, people who have been in prison and all these people that play instruments and they're, they're so awesome and you're, you're like, you're in this weird environment, you're just like looking up to people um, that probably you shouldn't be looking up to. But there's, uh, you know, all of a sudden you're, you're thrust into this reality that uh, demands certain things from you. And again, it's like, I feel like I almost put myself in these situations where I was saying, I'm going to make myself uncomfortable and I'm going to find my way out. So I, I kind of, you know, got into it. I was, I, was, I was getting into the groove of like being in an underground scene and, and you know, dealing with, you know, there's a lot of police activity and weird this and that and all, all this kind of stuff that you get into trouble as a kid. Some people find one way to do it. Some people find another way. But the cool thing about this was that um, I, I, was, I was able to use my artwork as a form of expression through that whole thing. So I was in, a, I was in bands and, and I, w I was making friends with guys who were in bands. We were traveling all over. And uh, you get, you really start to develop this network. And when you're, when you're developing this, I mean, there's, there's people who have older siblings, there's people who have cousins and, and uh, you know, these links to other um, worlds that you can just kind of be brought into, but once you when you force yourself into it is when you really develop something from it. You really learn from it, and whether it's bad stuff or good stuff, you're still learning from what exactly happened. You know, so um, some of the guys that I met, you know, I I, I remember one particular instance where <laughs> there was a big brawl, and I don't know what the hell possessed me to do this, but my friend who started it. I drove him away from the police while they were following us. I, what possessed me to do that, I don't know, because I wasn't even involved. You know, I was just like, oh, I gotta help out my boy and all this kind of stuff, but um, it's a bad decision. But you, when you're putting yourself in these positions, uh, you know, you're, you're gonna make bad decisions. And that, that kind of stuff flows through your life. You know, and, and your bad decisions change. It's not always the police. It could just be a bad client or, you know, a shitty breakfast. But, <laughs> you know, bad decisions happen. And you learn from them. So that's, that's kind of where, that's, you know, like, you're, you're starting to see a development. You're starting to see things happen. And uh, when, when I was doing that, you know, I, you make certain friends doing certain things. And you make certain enemies doing other things. But when all is said and done, you're learning skills and you're, and you're learning these things. It's, it's, uh, you're dealing with different personalities. You're dealing with different situations. Um, some of them are escalated and some of them are just really kind of bland. But uh, you're still learning. And, that, and that's, that's the thing I always try to think about is that no matter what happens and no matter how bad it is, you're learning from it. You're learning how to grow from it. You're learning how to deal with it in the future. And, and you're learning what not to do or, you know, how to avoid it. Uh, moving, moving forward. So, from from all of that stuff, you know, I, I became friends with uh, a bunch of bands, a bunch of labels, and all that stuff. And I started freelancing early, like legitimate freelancing. I, I think the first, my first paying job, I was 14 years old. Um, I was doing a lot of stuff for bands, and then, you know, it, as I was doing that, you know, word would spread. Like someone at my mom's office would say, "We need a website." I know your son knows computers. Or, you know that typical nonsense from the 90s. Uh, so I learned how to make websites. I think it was like AOL Press and you know all those kinds of the old school things that we all love so much. Um, but and, you know nonetheless it was still work 
and it was still something that I, I didn't realize you could make money doing. Like, I'm sitting there drawing, and I'm sitting there playing on the computer, and I was getting yelled at it, yelled at, uh, you know, for doing so, like, maybe a year earlier. Now, all of a sudden, I'm making money. The first website I ever did, I got paid 400 bucks for. Total, like, I was just like, the guy, the guy goes to me, um, so I need a website for my business. It's got to have this, 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 and that, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, how much? And I was like, $400? <laughs> and, and he was like, oh, that sounds reasonable. I was like, shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I mean when you're 14 years old and that's, that's the paycheck you get from doing something that you think you're goofing around with I'm like oh my god I'm going to be so rich so fast <laughs> uh, not true not true <laughs> but um, you know you really kind of kick into gear and you're like okay this is, this is, this is something that I could be doing this is something that I could really kind of make a life out of uh, so, so I did. That was, that was something that I started to do. Uh, it was like a part-time thing. You know, I had my, my jobs here and there. I, I got a job at uh, Office Max, um, uh, trying to make copies, but they wouldn't let me. Um, so I ended up working with my father doing construction for about six or seven years. And uh, that was cool, too. I mean, you learn a lot from, you know, <laughs> putting up sheetrock wrong and putting holes through people's walls and, and having them yell at you and then having my dad have to, you know... There's all sorts of things you learn from that, too, but, you know, it's just like you're learning business, you know, you're learning the, the ups and the downs, you're learning who's a pain in the ass, you know, you're learning who's not going to pay you, and even for, like, I mean, I remember I, I was going to do a band website, it was a $150 website, and they never paid me, and I was like, I'm going to hunt those guys down, and I'm going to get my $150, and I didn't, I couldn't drive, so I don't know where I was going. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't doing any hunting. Um... But, uh, you know, you get, you know, it becomes a part of you. It becomes something that you need in your life. Uh, and then at a certain point, you start to hit a certain stride. Now you understand what you're doing in the business. You understand that there is a life after uh, this one job or this stupid job or whatever. It's just like a fun project. But there is life after that, and there's more to it. Uh, you know, all of a sudden, people are just like, oh, you should check out this guy. He does cool websites on the Internet. Um, and, and they're like, oh, what's that? Why do I need that? <laughs> Let me tell you why you need a website. Uh, but, um, you know, you learn the salesman part. You learn the uh, client relations part. But then um, you also deal with people telling you that what you're doing is ridiculous. Um, and I know there's a lot of people who wanted to go into art design, whatever, some kind of creative aspect, and their families didn't support them. Um, and that sucks. You know, I mean, you only have a certain amount of time on, on this planet. I mean, why would you do something you don't like? Um, and my parents were really great about it. They supported me the whole way. It's the other people that drove me nuts. Um, a lot of times, since I got started so young, I always got the, uh, like, are you someone's assistant? Are you a student looking for credit? Like, are you do, what is that? And I said, no, no, I'm the designer. I'm going to be working on this. Oh, I thought you were going to be older. You look really young. And it, that, that kind of stuff was like my first intro, introduction to the, you know, take a hike mentality, where um, I started doing a lot of work out of spite and anger. And that <laughs> <laughs> continues today. <laughs> I mean, when anyone tells you you can't do something, I instantly, you know, it's that, like, John Locke from Lost mentality, you know? <laughs> Don't tell me what I can't do. Uh, but, yeah, that, that character was based on me. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, when people start telling you that, there's, there's, there's two kinds of people. There's the accepting it and saying, yeah, right, this is, this is crazy, I can't be doing this. And then there's the type of person where it's like, you know, I don't care what you say. I'm still going to do what I want to do. And I, I, I think that everyone in this room can pretty much say that. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in this room to begin with. So, I mean, that's awesome. I, that's something that we can all bond over. I mean, even if we do different types of design work and we let, listen to different music and dress differently and come from different places, I think we can all agree that if we stood in a circle and we said, why are we doing this, it's, the answer is just going to be because I want to do it. It's not, it's not going to be anything else. There's no other answer. It's because I want to do it. Because when you start off in a, in a life of creativity, 
There's not, there's not like a, a, a yellow brick road with a guy standing at the end with bundles of money and like books that are lined up that, with your name on it. So it's like all you got to do is get to the end of that and you're going to have power and fame and riches and, and I don't know, whatever else comes along with that. But um, we, we do it because we love it. And if anything positive comes out of it, that's great. But the majority of us do it and we deal with a lot of negative stuff too and we still do it. So that's kind of the mentality I had when I was getting into this. It was just like, you know what? I enjoy doing this. I can't imagine putting on a suit and tie and going into an office and hearing some guy yell at me in between practices putting, you know, like, which actually, I got a great story for you. Um, that actually happened to me. I was working for, uh, I was doing some jobs on a, on a clothing company, and this clothing company was, um, I guess they weren't owned, but they, the, the major investment partner was the company that bought FUBU. Now, anyone that's familiar with FUBU knows that it's not run by fat, old, rich, Jewish white men. It's, it's people from, you know, more of like that streets attitude, and it's normally African Americans. But these guys were the worst of the worst. I went in with this meeting, this guy meets me, really nice guy, I want you to do this, this, and this, let's go talk with my business partner. So I go over to meet with uh, his business partner. He makes us sit there in his office for 20 minutes while he finishes a phone call about like something totally ridiculous and, and, and nonsensical. So you get, you get a little sick and tired after a while, you got things to do. So, um, so the guy finishes, he, oh, what's up? What do you guys want to talk about? And it's like, I don't know, I've been sitting here for 20 minutes, there's a whole lot of things I want to talk about at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, so, so the guy I was working with, he introduces me. Oh, this is John. I was telling you about John. He does, he does the T-shirts and he does the this and that. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 this guy. All right. He, I want to show you his website so you can see what he does. Oh, yeah, go pull it up. So I go, I have to go pull up his website. Awkwardly behind, behind his desk, a scooch over, you know. And he's like sitting there like, like this. With his, he's got his Bluetooth on and everything. And uh, so I got to scooch over there. And of course... This guy, he's so fancy, right? But he's got his, like, Windows 95 desktop with four <laughs> monitors. Like, it doesn't, I, I don't know. And the best part is, it's like, if you're using a monitor, you expect the mouse to go this way. No, 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 no. This guy was like, this, this way, and this is doing this way. He didn't know how to set up his monitors. So, uh, so I finally figure out how to open up Internet Explorer, like, 0 0.5 on his website, <laughs> uh, on, his, on his computer. And my website doesn't load because it's just like too advanced, like couldn't read CSS. So I finally pull it up and I show him a couple of things and the guy's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. So while he's blowing me off and I'm trying to engage him somehow, uh, meanwhile in my head already thinking like, screw this guy, I'm not, I'm not doing this job. Um, he gets up, he gets up from the awkward position that he put me in. So I have to, I'm now hovered over his, his desk like this. <laughs> Meanwhile, he gets up and starts walking around me. And uh, he, picks, he picks up a golf club. And he walks over. And right at my feet, starts putting. Right at my feet. And I, I, I said to myself, there's, there's no way this is a real thing. This doesn't, this is like, this guy is an, a villain from an 80s movie. <laughs> Like, I'm, like, looking around for cameramen and stuff, and I was like, ah, it's a joke. It's not a joke. <laughs> um, and then, you know, finally we're done with all the business after he finishes practicing his putting. And he comes over and he sits down, totally blows me off again, so I have to, like, do one of these moves to get away so we don't, like, awkwardly touch. And, uh, and a, a, another big old fat white guy comes in and he goes, uh, what do you think of this FUBU stuff? And they're just going over the whole entire FUBU collection and designing it themselves, um, which gave me a complete insight into the, the corporate um, mindset of taking something that had some kind of passion and sensibilities at some point and completely ripping it of any soul it ever once had. Um, you got, you got a, a brand that was made by people who made it for a reason with, with you know, there was dedication behind it, there was, there was heart, there was guts. And these guys, I mean, these stupid rich guys 
are sitting there designing it and like making the worst choices possible. And you, you sit there and you watch them do these things and it's like, it's, it's just, it's really sickening, you know, and you, and you think like that's the day that I'm going to quit because I can't deal with people like this. But, you know, there's always another day. But um, let me get back. <laughs> let me get back and go, go to where I was. Um, that was just a good story I had to tell you guys. Uh, <laughs> so uh, around that time, um, I was doing a lot of the freelancing for, for bands and, and, and local businesses and stuff. And I, I really thought this was going to be my calling. Um, so I ended up, you know, I didn't go to an art school, art school. I went to a local university that had a, a pretty decent graphic design department. I mean, I, I grew up 20 minutes from Manhattan, so I didn't think that it was necessary to do those. Like, I could work and make money and freelance and then go into the city whenever I wanted if I needed some kind of inspiration. Um, you know, I kind of regretted it halfway through and then kind of wished I did, and then I looked into grad school and all that stuff, and it's just, it's really expensive. So I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to do it how I want to do it. And me, all the while, you know, paying attention to online message boards, uh, design message boards, I was on all of them, you know, and you just, you see where certain people are going. I mean, it's like this person went to, you know, uh, Pratt, and this one went to RISD, and this one went here, and now they're getting internships at Pentagram, and this place and that place. And it's just like, wow, you are set up. You don't have to do anything. If you get an internship there and they like you a little bit, like all these big places you hear all the time, it's just like, well, I interned at this place and I've got a job here and they hired me right off the bat and now I'm doing this. It's like you didn't do anything. You didn't put in any effort. I mean, how could you possibly understand where you are if you don't even understand the work it took to get there? So seeing all this stuff and seeing people writing this, I don't even know if it was true, but just seeing it, um, gave me that whole idea of just like, this is not me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get there, but I'm going to get there on my own terms. And everything I've done has always been on my own terms. I make sure that if I want to do something, I'm not sacrificing, uh, you know, the, the, the love and the passion that I want to put into my work. I mean, if I'm, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it 110%. I'm not going to do it like some of these people, you know, like, the people that I went to school with, you know, some of them don't do design anymore. Some of them do like the, the you know, the ads in like the local penny saver or whatever. You know, I mean, it's like, it's like, why did you go to school and claim that this is something that you like to do if that's what you're going to do? I mean, the world needs people like that, sure. But like, if this is your love, if this is your passion, I mean, that's not where you belong. You belong in a place like this where people care about what you're doing, where every waking moment, I mean, it's Saturday night and we're sitting here talking about design. You know what I mean? Like, these people are out and they're like getting drunk with their friends and they're, you know, doing this and doing that and they're living their life the way that they see fit without anything, I'm gonna be critical, without anything of any substance. I mean, if, if you're just going out and you're just, you're just doing like all this little bullshit here and there, I mean, what is it, where does it get you? by the time you're, you know, on your deathbed. What did you do? You didn't do anything. Um, so it's like, you know, you, you, you want to be able to say that, you know, if I did this, I did this for real. And if I fail, I gave it a good shot, you know. But there is no failure, you know. You just keep going because every time you fail, it's, it should just be fire to keep going and doing more. You know, it's like, I might, I, I might have blown it this time, but next time I am, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow it by. It's going to be a piece of cake for me. Um, so that's kind of like, I, in college, I just really got very angry towards that whole, that whole mentality. My anger, my anger issues are going to be a running theme. <laughs> but it's like, you know what? I mean, you see, you see certain people, like, if you see someone getting handed something for nothing, you go, oh, I want that. You know, it's like, um, if you're a little kid and, and the, you know, there's like a rich kid on your block and they, you know, their parents buy him all the power wheels in the world. It's just like, ah, I want a power wheel so bad. And it's like, all I got is this crappy tricycle that I have to pretend it has a motor on it and I'm still like, I'm like nine years old and I don't want to ride a tricycle anymore, but it's the closest thing I got to a power wheels. It's like, what was I talking about? <laughs> what I'm saying is, um, 
if you, if, you, if you really want something, you'll work for it. And if you work for something and you get it, you'll appreciate it. And you'll love every second of it. It's like, it's like, you know, when you hear people say you don't understand the value of a dollar. It's like if you work for something, the value of that achievement, the value of that success is going to be something that you're not going to sit there and just be like, oh, I'm so great, I did this. It's going to be a milestone. It's going to be like, I finally did that. Now I'm on to the next thing. Let's keep it going. You know, like you want to just, you want to just be able to keep moving, keep doing things and say, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up a business. I'm going to open up my own shop. I'm going to open, I'm going to go freelance. I'm going to do all this stuff. Um, and, and to actually do it and let the failure help you grow, um, it's, that's, I mean, it doesn't get better than that. It really doesn't. Because when you finally do start seeing a little bit of success, it's, you know that's yours. No one gave it to you. No one handed it to you. You, can't, you. you can stand there and you can say, yeah, I did this. It was me. I did it. I did all of it. And I did it by myself and I didn't need help from anybody and I didn't need anyone, you know, handing me something on a silver platter. So you, you just did it, you know. So, I mean, the mentality of thinking, you know, that I wanted to develop into something on my own just kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And I remember, <laughs> I remember um, I had this neighbor who lived across the street. Um, we used to call him Stupid Mark. Uh, <laughs> wasn't the brightest guy in the world. Not the smartest, you know, I mean, not the smartest family either, but really kind of like condescending because uh, for some reason a lot of stupid people are very condescending. And, they, um, you know, we were hanging out on my stoop one day and uh, I, was, I was talking with my mother earlier saying, you know what, I think I want to open up my own design studio one day. I think that's something I want to do. And I, I, I had come up with this idea, and I was like, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it. And I, that, was my, that was my goal. So I was still in college. You know, we're just hanging out. So Stupid Mark's mother comes over, and, uh, and, and Stupid Mark makes mention of, I think, uh, of that I was going to open up my own business. So she just got, like, real annoying, and she was just like, oh, you're going to open up your own business? What, is it going to be, like, on the World Wide Web? And I was like, yeah, yeah I guess so, you know? <laughs> So I, I'm just like, okay, whatever. She just doesn't get it. And she goes, she goes, if you open up your business, it's going to be called bum.com. And I was like, what the f what, what did I do <laughs> to deserve that comment? I just didn't. And so I, I told my mom. My mom was like, I'm going to go over there. I'm going to, you know. Uh, but like, it, it's, it's little things like that where I was just like, you know what? I am going to start my own business. Maybe I will call it bum.com and I'll make billions of dollars and have your house destroyed and leveled <laughs> and make you live under a bridge. <laughs> That's still the plan, by the way. <laughs> I'm going to get to that. That's in one of the next slides. There's pictures. <laughs> No, but seriously, um, her house should be destroyed. <laughs> so after college, I mean, I dealt, I, I, there was a lot of things that happened, there's a lot of things that happen in college, you know, some that you should talk about, some that you probably shouldn't talk about. Um, but there's a lot of things that happen. I mean, I had a bad relationship in college, and that kind of threw me for a loop, and I was like, oh, I hate everything, life sucks. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the little things like that that put you back into the mindset of, uh, how do I deal with this? How do I overcome this, this challenge? And something like that kind of threw me instantly back into designing like at full force. Um, and it, it showed me that I, I don't have to put all my energy into something that's obviously going nowhere and just causing me stress. I can put my energy into something a little bit more positive that I enjoy that might actually, you know, turn into something that's even better than as much as I enjoy it now. So, um, you know, all that led, all that led to um, the end of college. And at the end of college, we had, you know, your typical senior show of this, you know, graphics and stuff like that. And uh, I, I did a couple of pieces that I really, really liked. And I was very proud of them. There was some of my freelance work in there. There was some of my class projects in there. And uh, these guys approached me and they said, you know, we run a design studio that's local. We would love it if you came to, you know, do some freelance work for us. So I, I you know, I was like, Psh, awesome, this is great. Here I am, man. I'm on a fast track. Um, so a week later, I put on my suit and tie.
because that's uh, what I thought I was supposed to do. And uh, I go to their design studio, and there's two guys sitting in a room making really horrible websites and really terrible logos and uh, really, really bad brochures. Uh, and, and, and I'm sitting there, and they said, okay, we want to make... <laughs> I wonder if they're going to listen to this. That'd be funny. Uh, <laughs> we want to make a T-shirt company that, uh, that, uh, um, that appeals to UFC fighters and their fans. So this is before affliction and everything. So I was like, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> so uh, I work up a quote for them, not knowing what a quote is, you know, just like going based on what I've done before for bands and other, you know, uh, clients and stuff like that. So I work up a quote, send it over. A guy takes like three weeks to get back to me, like to say that he's not interested. Um, so uh, <laughs> my mom told me not to curse, so I'm going to try not to curse. But... Uh, <laughs> I just want to say, F these guys, they're awful. And I could do better than them anyway. So I decided that I was going to open up my shop right then and there. And that was right out of college. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go get incorporated. I'm going to do the whole thing, get an accountant, set up health insurance. And it's just, I, I didn't have any money. I didn't have any clients, really, that could sustain a business. Um, so uh, I failed miserably, miserably, miserably. I think I sat at a desk uh, in my parents' house for about three and a half months, not doing anything. And every, every couple of hours or so, I'd say, you know, I think I need a break. Maybe I'll watch a movie. <laughs> watch a movie, go back to doing nothing. And I, that would just be like every 24 hours for three and a half months. So, I mean, <laughs> after a while, it's just like, what, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? And I, 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 would, talk, I would talk to myself. And I would say, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. You tell me what I'm doing. You're me. <laughs> um, so I decided to get a job. I was like, you know what, maybe I, maybe I can't do this free, because I was doing the freelance stuff before, but it wasn't, I wasn't trying to, to sustain a lifestyle, I wasn't trying to pay bills, I wasn't trying to do any of that. I was just doing cool stuff and I got paid for it, but I was going to school and I was working with my father and I had other things that were keeping me busy and keeping money in my pocket. Um, so, so I decide that it's time to go get a job. And I didn't want to get a job um, at some place in the city yet because I didn't want to get soaked up by a company um, and just immediately get into that like kind of like corporate setting or whatever. I didn't want to feel like I had a boss and that I had to stay there for this amount of years and then I had to do this and that. Um, I mean, that probably wouldn't have happened anyway, but I didn't want that. So I went someplace local and uh, I, I got a job at a place about five minutes from my parents' house that was, uh, they, did, they did graphic design and marketing only for financial advisors. Um, so the work creativity level was through the roof, as you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I hope you like the font Trajan, because that's all you're using. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so needless to say, that didn't last long. And... Uh, I remember I got to a point, and this, this kind of stuff all happened, it all kind of coincided uh, simultaneously, and I, I got to a point where they gave me a, a six-month project to do, and I finished it in, I think, like three and a half days, because I just, like, everyone surrounding me, I wasn't interested in talking to. They were all like the nine-to-five types. They, <laughs> this is great. They hired me as the assistant to the creative director, which means I get paid less than everyone else, but I have to go there longer and set a good example for them. So I had to show up an hour early and leave an hour late and made sure I got a much smaller paycheck than everybody else and then do all of their work too. So um, I was getting pretty sick of that. And at, at the boiling point, I was talking with some of my coworkers there and they pull up uh, pictures from the Christmas party last year and what they did. And I immediately was like, I, can't, I gotta get the hell out of here. There's no way. <laughs> They took a, they, I, I think they, uh, they took a party bus into, into Manhattan, into Midtown, and uh, they went to like Radio City, and they all, they all smoked joints, and, and it, was really, it was really bad, and it was, they had a great time, and you could see pictures of the boss, and he's like running around like this with his shirt untucked, and, uh, <laughs> and I, 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 I had to say no, I had to say no, so I was out of there. 
I left. I said, I can't, I can't take this. I was, and I, I think it was, well, it was like two or three months I was out of there. So I ended up getting a job at a different firm that was a little bit more cool. But what it was, it was a print broker and it was, uh, it was a design house. But it was mostly a print broker. And a lot of what we did was like club flyers and, you know, flyers for promotional events for cooler companies. I mean, I did my fair share of MTV club promotion flyers. So, um, you know, there's that. Uh, but, you know, in the, in, in the meantime, I met some really cool people. I did some really cool stuff with them, and I learned a lot about lettering and design in general and, and how to work fast and how to deal with um, troublesome clients. And, like, the real deal, though, not like my 14-year-old troublesome clients. I'm talking, like, the, like people who are problems. Um, because for some reason, half of our clients were real issues. So it's like you have to get on the... <laughs> actually, one of the clients was Eric Marillo. You might know Eric Marillo from the song, I Like to Move It, Move It. <laughs> so this guy, <laughs> this guy thought he was the king. And every time his manager or his assistant or whoever called in, it was like, you got to roll out the red carpet for this guy because he wrote, I like to move it, move it. <laughs> and there's only so much you can take of someone like trying to ride that wave. Uh, <laughs> before you're not nice on the phone anymore. And, and there's like, there was like a lot of that, you know? And it was just like, this guy wasn't getting anything important done. He was getting flyers done because he was playing in a club in, in, you know, like uptown somewhere that no one was gonna go to. Um, and it was just, you know, it, it got frustrating after a while. So, so uh, maybe eight or nine months into that, I was like, you know what? I think I've learned enough about people giving me a hard time I think I've learned enough about how to do business the right way, watching other people do business the wrong way. And uh, I decided to just, you know, do it myself and, and f try again. So uh, I went out and I started the studio again. And uh, there was, you know, I, I had some clients that I could take with me and I had some work lined up. And uh, I did it, you know, and, and it was okay. I had a couple of retainers that, that helped me along. Um, you know, but I, w I still wasn't doing what I wanted. I was still doing, I was still doing brochures. I was still doing really bad, like, uh, two-page websites. I was still doing, like, really annoying stuff. Nothing that I wanted to do because I had to pay bills. And it's like when you're working for yourself to start out with, you have, you know, an apartment to pay for, or you have food to pay for, or, or I mean, whatever, whatever your thing is, even that you enjoy doing, you have to pay for it. You, you know, it just doesn't... You just don't find it under a rock. Um, so I was still doing really garbage stuff, and I felt stifled, and I felt like I was never going to get any better. And I remember thinking to myself, I, like, uh, I got asked to do a, a few logos at one point, and I remember thinking that I should be really good at designing logos, but I was actually really, really bad. And I, I couldn't figure out what was going wrong um, with, with everything. And I, I got a little... Um, I got a little, uh, you know, held up with getting stuck at a certain point, and um, it just it it just totally shut me down. Totally shut me down. I couldn't design anything cool, even if I tried. Every time I had the one opportunity to do some like a CD layout or anything, I bombed out on it. I couldn't do it. I had no creativity. I had nothing because um, I was trying to be a business person. So you finally figure it out after a while. And then, boom, like, like the economy crashes and every, every ounce of um, security that you thought you once had is gone. Uh, so it's like, okay, so I'm not doing anything that I like to do and I'm just making enough money to get by. But now I'm not even making enough money to get by and still not liking what I'm doing. Like this is, this is a problem, you know. So we ended up... Um, I had a partner at that time, too, who, who came on a little bit after I started it. We ended up starting working uh, with uh, streetwear brands. And the problem with some of these streetwear brands is that the more popular they got, the less they wanted to acknowledge the fact that other people were designing it for them. So you would see uh, brand you know, X, for example. I won't name names. But we designed them from the ground up and they started gaining a pretty significant following. And then you'd see interviews with the guy who owns the company, and they'd call him creative director and lead designer and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And all he did was tell us that the stuff that we were doing that was good 
was bad, and then we'd have to convince him of it, and then he'd finally accept like one or two of them, and then they would sell like hotcakes, and, and he would take total credit for it. And you sit there and you're just like, man, I can't win. There's nothing I can do. I finally have one cool project, and this guy is keeping me down. You know, so it's just like, I'm doing something cool. No one cares that I did it. They only care that this guy did it. I was doing it because I didn't have any money, so I might as well do something I enjoy, but I'm not even getting anything out of that. So it's like, where am I going to go with all this stuff? You know, what am, what am I going to do? All I feel is frustration. Is this, is this the time where I call it quits, you know? Like, is, it, is this the time where I decide that it's like, all right, maybe I, sh maybe I should go back and work with my dad, or maybe I should just, like, do something else that doesn't require me to work so hard because it's obviously not getting me anywhere. And you get to that point where you're just like, man, I, I failed this time, and I got by, and I failed this time, and I got by, and I failed this time, and I got by. But after a certain amount of failures, you're just like, man, I, I don't think I could do this anymore. I don't know how many more failures I can take and then survive them. Um, but then something happens, and something happens that you wouldn't expect. And, and that was this company that we were working with. We uh, piggybacked a T-shirt order onto their order and printed a bunch of, bunch of shirts with rejected imagery from that company, and we called it a different company. And uh, we put them online, and they sold really well, and I, we started getting emails like, when is your next line coming out? When is, you know, when's the next season dropping? And uh, so we were just like, oh, we can make products on our own, and then sell them to people, and we don't have to deal with someone telling us they're bad, because if anyone doesn't like them, they won't buy them. They're not going to email us and tell us how bad our work is. They're just not going to buy them. So, so we decided to shift, and we closed, we closed the design studio, and we opened up the clothing company. And uh, as soon as that started happening, I mean, we're both, you know, broke as broke can be, and I was right about to get married, and uh, that's never a good idea if you're really, really broke. <laughs> so you're, you're at the point where I'm sitting there and I'm just like, okay, this is great that we're starting a new thing, but I still got to pay money. So I'm sitting there on Craigslist looking for like web banner ad jobs and just anything I could do to pay the electric bill or just make sure that we can eat dinner for a couple of days. And, um, you know, it's, <laughs> thank God I got married though because people gave us money uh, <laughs> so it worked out. So basically what I'm getting at, <laughs> I, took, I said to my wife, and my wife was really great. She, uh, I said, can I just take $2,000 you know, out of this and buy a new computer so I can actually freelance? She said, yeah. She goes, I know you'll put it back. So um, I did. I said, you know what? Forget everything. I'm just going to do what I want to do. I see a little bit of success with designs that are going on the t-shirts for the clothing company. I know what I like. I know that other people can also like the things that I like. So I said, forget it. I'm just going to do it. And I did it. And I mean, that was, that was the, the catalyst to really to make something of, of who I am today. It was, I went through all these things. I mean, it was, a, it was a rough childhood. I went through you know, all the crazy dudes that I used to hang out with when I was in bands. I, I went through, you know, all the college stuff and, and the, the typical, like, working at places stuff and all that. And all I had to do was to just say, you know what, I have confidence in what I like. And I, I, I know that if I do this, I'm going to be happy. And if I'm happy, I'll find a way to make things work. And that was the key. So as soon as I did that, I said, you know what, forget everything else. I'm going to put up a portfolio of all the things that I like. I'm going to do some stuff that I like. It doesn't matter what anyone else says. I'm going to do it my way. And then all of a sudden, I start getting emails. John, we love your stuff. We want to design stuff. I was like, if I would have known this 10 years ago, <laughs> I, would have, I would have had a lot more hair than I have now. <laughs> but, I mean, basically, like, it's just, it, it's perseverance, it's passion, it's uh, determination, it's a little bit of spite, and it's a little bit of anger. It's, it's about fire, you know? If you got the fire, and if you could put up with other people's garbage, and, you can, and you, can, you can put up with your own garbage and deal with the problems that you have um, going forward, then it's like, you know what? It's all going to be worth it in the end. And I mean, I'm 30 years old. I got a long way to go, hopefully. So I, I don't consider myself anywhere near where I, I hope to be one day. I mean, this is... It's a great position to be able to do what I love and, and to work with really great people. 
but I know there's a lot more out there, you know, and, and it's like, to me, this is, the, this is the second rung of a tall ladder, and I want to be able to keep doing more and keep doing more, and it's just like, you know what, I'm going to fail a lot, I'm going to have a lot of problems, but I know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and I know that there is, um, a, there's always going to be a way to make it work, and, you know, thankfully, I have some good people behind me, I have a good family, and, uh, you know, sometimes that's all you need, and if, if you really care, um, you know, you'll find a way to make it work. And uh, that's all I got to say.